Hello, my name is Adrian Stevens, and I'm part of the Xamarin University curriculum team. And today, I'm going to talk to you about creating custom gestures using the built-in Gestures Builder application. Now, this Gestures Builder app can be found on most Android devices, and the icon is typically a pink swirl on a notepad, and you can see that here. And it's important to note this app is also available on most emulators. As well, this application is open source, and it's been ported to C Sharp. So if you're interested in looking at the source code, you can find the C Sharp port on developer.xamarin.com. So I'm going to jump right into it. And I've opened up one of the Android virtual devices provided by Google. And if we go into our list of applications, we can see our Gestures Builder app. Notice our little pink swirl. Let me open it up and on a default install, you won't have any gestures, but we can add them. So let's push the add gesture button and I'm gonna make a check gesture. The lower section is for touch input. So we'll do a check and we can give it a name. And if we're happy with that, we'll push the done button and it will save it to the device. And I'm gonna add a second gesture. Click the button again. And this time I'm going to do an erase a swipe gesture. So I'll do a couple strokes back and forth and we'll give it a name. Now watch the lower portion of the screen when I push the done button. It's gonna indicate the location where the gesture is saved. In our case, it's storage emulated zero gestures. And this means that our files are stored on the device. And if you're running a physical device, you may have a file explorer app installed and that makes it fairly trivial to find and extract that file but I will show you another technique you can use, which can be handy, especially with simulators or emulators. And that's using the Android device monitor. You can launch this using Xamarin Studio, go to the tools menu, and of course you see here, open Android device monitor. And typically this will automatically connect to the running device. And here we see it's connected to our emulator. Now remember the location it showed for us, that was storage emulated zero. This may be different depending on the device. And this is the location for my Android simulator. And here's our gestures file. And I can easily extract this at the safety disk. And this will go into my personal folder. And before we start using the gesture file, there's a couple of things I wanna tell you about. And the first is the gesture overlay view. And this is a transparent layer that's used to recognize those gestures that we just created. And this is typically added above your UI and that's so it can intercept the touch events. And its job is to use your exported gestures and then detect them. Now, when you're working with the imported gesture file, you're gonna use a class called gesture library. And as the name suggests, its job is to hold those gestures. And so the gestures file created by that gesture builders app will be loaded into a gesture library. And there's another class that goes hand in hand with this one, and that is gesture libraries. Now this is used to load the gestures into the library and the naming is a little bit confusing. So gesture libraries is a helper object and it includes a number of static methods for loading the gestures. And just remember, it is not used to hold multiple gesture libraries it's just a helper object to instantiate a single gesture library objects. So we've now loaded our custom gestures and we have our UI configured. It's time to start detecting the gestures. And to do that, we need to be notified when the user is performing gestures. And we do this by subscribing to the gesture overlay views gesture performed event. And the event handler will receive a gesture performed event args. And this gesture performed event args has one interesting property named gesture. And this is what contains the gesture specific details. And this is what we'll use to determine which gesture has been performed. Of course, the gesture overlay view doesn't know anything about our custom gestures. So now we call the gesture libraries recognize method and we're gonna pass in the data or more specifically, the event args gesture property. And this finally connects all of the pieces. 
The recognize method returns a list of predictions, specifically one prediction for each gesture contained in that loaded gesture library, and each one receives a score. The higher the score, the better the match is to the gesture. And here we see an example of sorting those scores. And finally, to determine which gesture corresponds to which prediction, we can use the prediction's name property. And this name will correspond to the name set when the gesture was created using the gestures builder application. So let's see it in an actual application. And the first thing I'll do is bring in our exported gestures file. I'm gonna add this to our raw folder. And I'll make sure that the build action is set to Android resource. I have the code written already, but let's walk through it. I'm going to open up the main activity. Now, as mentioned in the slides, there's a number of ways to do this. But in our application here, in our onCreate method, we're creating that gesture overlay view, and we're setting it as our primary content. But notice, we're still inflating an XML file, and then we're setting that into the gesture overlay view. And so it will be responsible for presenting our UI, but it's able to now receive all of those touch events. Now there are a couple of other interesting things going on in our onCreate method. Take a look at line 29. Here's our gesture overlay view, and here's that gesture performed event. We've wired this up to a named method on gesture performed. You can see that below, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in just a moment. But right below it, here is where we're loading our gesture library. Here's our gesture libraries helper class. There's our static from raw resource method. And then here's the ID for our gestures for our file added to the raw folder. And then of course, just a little bit of sanity checking here. Now finally, let's take a look at the on gesture performed method. We see here, we're passed in the gesture performed event args. And right away, we're extracting your predictions. We use the gesture library, the recognize method, and we pass in the gesture property from our gesture performed event args. And then a little bit of link here to extract our predictions and put them in order. Now the rest of this is just plain old C sharp. We make sure that we have at least one valid prediction. And now we're just doing some comparisons to check against our two gestures. First, we check our, gest our check mark and second are a race. And we are checking to make sure the score in the case of our check mark is at least four. Now this is somewhat arbitrary and what will constitute a good score is going to change depending on the complexity of your gesture. So four might be a good starting point, but you'll probably want to experiment to fine tune the performance and the recognition of your gestures in your own project. So let's try out the application. Here's our app. We know we have our gesture overlay view loaded. And notice when I start drawing, I start dragging or touching the screen, you can see it actually draws the shape of the gesture, it tracks the path. That is provided by the gesture overlay view by default. You can see here it detected our race gesture with a low score. Let's try a check. That was a very good score and our UI has changed. And if I use our erase gesture, it returns. And if I try a different gesture here, you can see here that we're not getting a match. Let's just debug the code quickly. I'm gonna put a breakpoint in on gesture performed and let's provide a valid check mark. We hit our breakpoint and we're gonna sort our predictions. And if I show you our predictions object, you can see here that we actually have two values, one for our check mark and one for our race. And in the particular gestures file that I used, the name was checkmark1 and erase1. And this is not a bad convention to use. You could actually have more than one gesture that matches checkmark with slightly different shapes, different styles to have a, a bigger hit list. Make sure we have a valid prediction, get our first or default, and now we're just gonna check the names. And here we're doing starts with, and again, we could have checkmark1, 2, 3, and 4, again, with different shapes. We'll make sure we have our prediction score at least four. And in this case, it has succeeded. Our score here is about 7.8 and the name is correct. And so we're going to update our UI. And that's about all there is to it. You can go ahead and start creating your own gestures and consuming them in your own applications.
And this brings us to the end of our presentation. If you'd like further information, please check out the excellent documentation on the web portal, developer.xamarin.com. And if you have any questions, please visit the Xamarin forums. Again, my name is Adrian Stevens, and thank you very much for watching.